All right, so in this video we're checking out a new FPV camera from Eachine. It's called the White Snake, and it only comes in this micro size, 19 millimeters, and of course it's analog. It comes in two versions, and this is a 2.1 millimeter version here with this lens on the right, and here on the left is a 1.8 millimeter version, slightly different lens. The field of view on the 1.8 is wider. It's 160 degrees field of view, and the field of view on the 2.1 is narrower it's 130 degrees field of view so different field of views for your preference uh, the cameras are NTSC and PAL switchable and also 4.3 and 16.9 switchable uh, pretty typical of all cameras it's a CMOS sensor it's a very large sensor um, 1 over 1.8 so it's in the same size range as the uh, Foxier Toothless, uh, the Rattel, and the, I think the Runcam Nano, no, I'm sorry, the Runcam Phoenix 2, I believe, and which comes in obviously micro and nano sizes for all those cameras. There's no nano size for the White Snake yet. <laughs> I've imagined, I imagine this is probably one in the works and it's probably going to come out soon. And this one is currently on flash sale for about $20 until the 26th of July. Um, so if you're looking for a CMOS sensor with, uh, you know, a very large sensor like this with, you know, these specs and this image, you might want to check it out. Um, the image I thought would be similar to the, maybe like the Rattel or the Toothless, but the image looks quite a bit different. And I'll let you guys make your own judgments, but basically my opinion in a nutshell is that uh, the image is less saturated than the... Retail image and the toothless and uh, Phoenix image, those are all much more saturated. So this, the blues and the greens on this camera are very muted uh, compared to those other cameras. So if you don't like oversaturated images, uh, at least out of the box, then this one might suit you better. Of course, all these settings are adjustable. Okay, so in the box you get a manual and here is a quick look at the specs if you want to pause the video and take a look at it. Get a cleaning cloth, and you get uh, the video cable goes to your drone. You'll have to probably cut that off and solder to your flight controller. And then you get this uh, controller, OSD controller board here. Um, pretty typical. I think the Caddx one also works on this camera if I remember correctly. And then you get some mounting screws and nuts. All right, so the uh, 2.1 millimeter version weighs 8.1 grams, and the 1.8 millimeter version comes in a little bit heavier, 8.4 grams. All right, let's go ahead and power this up and take a look at what the image looks like. And if I, I forgot to mention, the voltage range is a typical 5 to 30 volts on the input. Okay, so we're taking a look at the uh, 1.8 millimeter version here. And let's see if I can't give you guys a look at the field of view. And pretty typical. Um, I have 160 degree field of view vertically. I think it's in 4.3 mode right now. I'll double check that. But you can see the door there on the left, and the bookcase there over on the right next to the window. And then at the top, you can see the lights. And at the bottom, you can see the desk there. And all of those are pretty much visible here. So that's about right 160 degree field of view. Pretty good field of view vertically. And this is the camera that I would use if um, I were to choose between the two. The other one's a much more narrow, might be better for like an airplane or something, probably not so much for a quad. All right, so I got the lens cap on. Let's take a look at the settings. So uh, this is pretty typical here. Uh, this looks like a Caddx, I think, uh, menu. And we're in NTSC mode. Um, oh, it says it's 16.9 mode, okay. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, 2.1 millimeter lens version and you see it's much more zoomed in much more narrow at 130 degrees so you can see the door there on the left bookcase there on the right so and the light over there see how much bigger it is and you get less uh, lens distortion as well but as you can see if you're kind of just looking at the field of view vertically it's pretty narrow as you can see right there So this is why I would recommend the uh, 1.8. All right, let's take a quick look at the settings. Pretty typical automatic white balance, or automatic exposure, white balance. I think that's set to 
uh, auto. Everything's probably auto. I, I, I flew everything. And stock factory settings, I didn't change any settings. And this is what it came with. So typically, like if you look at like the Rattel, um, these values are all on auto, but now they've set these to manual. So the color gains, like for example, seven, sharpness is set to one. So uh, perhaps this is uh, an adjustment to the Cadex um, settings. I, I actually didn't really compare the settings exactly. So I'm just showing you what came from the factory. Near the video settings, so NTC PAL switchable and 16943 switchable. Okay, so I'll get right into the sample flight footage for both of the cameras and also show you some uh, daytime cloudy and low light footage as well. Uh, that'll be posted in a separate video at um, 60 frames per second. Anyway, so here's the footage. Let me know what you guys think and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.